What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Say It podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale, and this week's guest I'm so excited to have. Seriously, one to love. She is a comedian. She is hilarious. She has a series on Hulu right now called Living for the Dead, which is available now. Go check it out on Hulu and an amazing podcast called Ghosted with Roz Hernandez. It's Roz Hernandez. She uh, wakes up early every morning. Oh. Uh, I love you. How are you? I love you. I'm great. You've known me for like five different gender identities. It's true. It's true. But I, I I'm I'm loving this. I'm I lo- picked one. I honestly I'm loving this like Selena Quintanilla bang that you were just rocking right now. Oh my god, thank you. Yeah. It's I love Selena. It's giving como la flor. Uh-huh. Bitty bitty. Giving como me duele. Mm. Me duele en todo. Uh. You just went to Mexico before we were talking about uh, the podcast. We were talking about your trip to Mexico and how you... I went to the homeland. Yeah. How was that? Just by yourself or No, what? I was doing a gay cruise. Oh, which one? Atlantis. How was that? So fun. Was it? I love them. How many people jumped off the boat? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have no clue. I really keep to myself when I do those. I... Because I don't party and I like no one's gonna hook up with me, so I just like <laughs> do <laughs> just the saddest cruise. It's very gay <laughs> men, but it's fun, like yeah. it's fun. But nowadays, like that, I'm not this is not what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. Maybe like if they're like a little bi curious, but that's not who goes on a gay cruise. The yeah. gay cruise, if you're paying money to be on a boat with only gay men, you are gay. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of the gayest things you could do. It really is. It's a rite so, of passage. I feel like in the LGBTQ plus comedian uh, life is to do gay an Atlantis cruises. cruise. Yeah, it's I a lot. Them. I've done quite a few. I love them. I I just it's fun for me nowadays. Performing for gay men is like my favorite. When I was a gay man. Yeah. Not as much. Yeah. But now I'm like, <laughs> it's me. Worship me. <laughs> I love you people. <laughs> Your inner Judy Tenuta has just come yes, out. Mm. It could happen. I know it is happening. Well, I'm very glad you were here. I'm uh, so stoked because today is the anniversary, the 112th year that the Titanic sank. Oh, I know. The Titanic sank. Yeah, 112 years ago today. Wow. Oh. I usually celebrate. I completely forgot. I know. I know. A lot of people forget, but... I don't need to hear about this after I just told you I go on cruises a lot. Fair. But Did, I, Now, who were the gay comedians on the Titanic? Well, it was um, Johnny Sassafras and <laughs> uh, his, his uh, minstrel team. Hmm. Were you on that? What? The Titanic? Were, were yes. You doing, were you doing a contract? <laughs> Could you imagine? I'm like, I'm 112 years old. Um, sometimes I feel like it, especially with this damn past weekend. I'm glad the, the sun is finally out. The weather is beautiful. My boyfriend's out of town. And so I am just like living this single dog dad life. Like I was walking her this morning and all the other single dog dads were like, Hello, good morning. I'm like, oh, the sun's out. The rain has stopped. I'm over the rain. Aww. I'm over it. I never want it to rain again. I, I disagree. You disagree? I love it. I say bring it. I'm goth. You are goth. I get I'm that. Goth. The only reason I'm wearing black today is because I just washed my hair, but I usually don't express that I'm goth because I have terrible dandruff. So I usually am wearing bright colors, mm-hmm. but I am goth. You were goth. Je suis goth. I want to be, I want it to rain every day. And I don't want to have to go anywhere. I don't want to have to drive over the hill to go to a podcast. I don't want to do any of it. (laughs) But thanks for inviting me. Anytime you want to come, honey. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Well, much like the Titanic sinking, I feel like Coachella has officially sunk. Um, Have you been before? No. Have you? Never. I think that's always a a question in the LGBTQ plus community (laughs) as well. I don't even want to leave my home. I just like I wouldn't I would never go to the desert to be with thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Yeah, I never. I agree, especially with it being so expensive. I'm like, I can just party in a porta potty for free. You know what I mean? How much is it? I mean, it's free, mama. You just have to lock the door and just 
No, but how much is Coachella? So expensive. What? I, mean, I want to say it's in the thousands of dollars if you want to like do it up Are right. You serious? Plus Airbnb, plus hotel, unless you want to like camp there. Ugh. No. It's one of these things for me when I see the post, I just go. If I see somebody, it's once a year, yeah. I see a bunch of people with like very little clothes on. And I'm just like, no. I can tell that's not something I want to even look at. It is interesting. So the general admission starts off at uh, tier one. It has three tiers. So 500 is the first one. 600 is tier three. I mean, that's oh just God. one. If you want shuttle, it's over 600. Tier three, 720. And VIP is uh, tier one, 1,069. Tier two, 1,269. So... It's a lot. And that's just one person. And that's just one weekend. And that's just one weekend. There's two. So oh we'll have a recap God. of week two of Coachella next week. I saw a clip of Justin Bieber mm -hmm. and Will, not Willow Smith. Does it matter? Jaden? Jaden Smith. Yeah, yeah. Did you see that clip? Mm -mm. They're real intimate with each other. Well, they're weird. And I know people were like, people were saying they were giving like, gay vibes or whatever, but everyone's yeah. like, no, they're just, they've grown up together. And I'm like, I get that. Yeah, I D thought it was kind of sweet. I think it's sweet too. Everyone just needs to lay off. But I honestly, I'm the same way. I've never gone. You know what? If it's your thing and you've got the money, go for it. Have a blast. It is not my thing. And not you know mine. what else is not my thing? Hmm. Watching it on YouTube. Oh, oh. Oh, is that a thing too? People were like sitting at home watching it. I'm like, no, I didn't miss anything. I was I was doing the same thing. I was going through my my phone, looking at everyone like doing it. And I was like, oh no. Do people like party at home? And I know, yeah, but I'm like, it? I know, I know you. We're I know your age. Like, <laughs> what do you uh, do? Are you that big of a Sabrina Carpenter fan? Really? Mm -hmm. I don't even know who that is. I I I found out uh, <laughs> over the weekend. <laughs> okay. So Sabrina Carpenter is one of the big ones. She is one of the, like, children of uh, a new era, and she was wearing a shirt that said Jesus was a carpenter. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, there were some fun moments, I think. Doja Cat rolled around in mud. Um, no Doubt reunited, which was fun. Okay. Um, Lana Del Rey rode in on a motorcycle. Are you a Lana Del Rey? You said you're goth. I feel like you might be a Lana Del Rey fan. I like her a okay. lot. Would you see Lana Del Rey perform, though? Um, you know, I don't really pay to go. Like, I, I, I'm not, like, motivated to ever pay. I always miss concerts. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, I never thought that I could spend $400 to go <laughs> yeah. see that person. It just doesn't occur to me. Right, right. The only band I've seen multiple times is B-52s. Oh, that's fun. That's, like, the only one. But, like, I, I kind of regret not going to Renaissance. Like, I don't know. I wish I would have seen Madonna. Like, I, I actually, I'm starting to feel like I should go see concerts. It depends, because that's the same thing. That's exactly how I, I roll. I'm like, is it worth the show? Is there going to be a performance? What am I going to get? I don't want to see... Like, I love I love Lana Del Rey. I get it. Mm -hmm. And she showed up with Billie Eilish. They sang Ocean Eyes. Cool. But okay. I need Billie Eilish and Lana Del Rey just, like, in a room with me. I don't want everyone trying to sing over them because they all, they're very whispery and, like, yeah, I wouldn't mysterious. Be able to hear. And That's the worst part is when you watch a video and you hear all oh, the people. Everyone's screaming it, and they're just like, shut up. Yeah, I'm not into that. Um, I'm trying to think of some other moments. John Baptiste did a great job. Um, Olivia Rodrigo came out with No Doubt or with Gwen Stefani, and they sang. Word. Um and I think, oh yeah, and Kesha and um, Renee Rapp okay. collabed, and Kesha changed the lyrics to "Woke Up in the Morning, Fuck P Diddy." I was like, okay. oh, that's an interesting lyric. I never even mm -hmm. hasn't occurred to me. Yeah, Grimes had some crazy tech issues during her performance. I think it happened like three times where she, it like, it like shut off and she's like, I'm so sorry guys, this is my fault. Let's try it again. And it was like, burp, 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 burp. I'm like, oh, oh no, God. I know. Open mic. She should have gone to a supercharger before her set. You know what I mean? That's a Tesla joke. She dated Elon Musk, has a child with him named burp, 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 five, seven. Yes. Yeah. So, Overall, I'm sure it was fine. Celsius had a blast. It was sponsored by them. Everyone had their oh, pop-up. 
poosh houses, the Kardashians, all it was. It's just, it's just not. You know about so many things I don't know anything about. It kills me sometimes. <laughs> It it's good me. though. I need to know. I'm I'm learning a lot of. Things. Yeah. I don't know what Poosh is. Poosh is Kourtney Kardashian's brand. Okay. Yeah, it's her goop. So, Poosh okay. is to goop as goop is to Poosh. Well, okay, now that makes sense. <laughs> when Poosh comes to shove. Okay. <laughs> Poosh, got it. So yeah, there was a. It was just a lot of like pop up. Blah blah blah. Yeah. And everyone was trying to do the extra with their fashion. Like you said, like a lot of shirtless people. We had a lot of cowboy core. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a lot of um, fairy, um, you know, whimsical wings, wings, wings. Halos. halos. And then we had Teresa Judice and Taylor Swift. Now, Taylor Swift went to go support Ice Spice at her set. And dressed up in Barbie skull cosplay, <laughs> she's giving you truck driver um, U-Haul realness. Jojo uh -huh. Siwa, take notes. Jojo. Um, and then Teresa was there looking like this. So this was just a very unlikely pairing for me. But yeah. Taylor did the unthinkable. She actually went into the crowd. No. With the common folk. <gasps> and blended in. I'm sure she had like some like undercover security around her. She always does. Yeah. But it was just like, look, you guys, I'm just like you, a billionaire. I encountered her one time and there was somebody that was like undercover. <gasps> you encountered uh, Taylor Swift? Uh-huh. In public? Uh-huh, at a restaurant. And she went into the bathroom and someone stood at the bathroom. In normal clothes? I think so. Yeah. How did you not fight this person? <laughs> I'd be like, move. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if someone's in just regular clothes blocking the door, I'm like, can you need to move? Yeah. And they did it. I knew what was going on. Oh. It was fine. You knew that that was a security person? Actually, I don't know who it was. Maybe it was just some person. <laughs> they didn't even work for Taylor. <laughs> Maybe it was actually. You're like, it must have I'm been pissed. security. Yeah, no, it was just someone who's like, I got dibs. Yeah. I want to see Taylor when she comes out. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the, I mean, <laughs> we have uh, Haley Bieber uh, with, you know, farting out a dog in her reflection. Um, so that was, you know, just. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Who is this? Exactly. I this is Haley Bieber. This, this is Haley yeah, Bieber? She's the one that created a smoothie at Irwan for $80. Um, she also... I'm so out of it. I'm like, great. I've heard of this person. But you're I've learning. never seen her in my life. This is what the podcast is for, to educate and, and she, update. It wasn't, isn't she like Billy Baldwin's daughter or something? Uh, she is... Oh, my God. Who is it? Is it Daniel Baldwin? She's one of the Baldwins. She's, she's, well, yeah, she's a Baldwin. Uh, Stephen Baldwin, yes. Stephen Baldwin's Stephen Baldwin's daughter. daughter. Okay. Um, and wow. she says the category is comfort. Ugh. Pan leg. The category is no pants, I think. Which I love. She's Elaine stretching it, honey. She looks good. <laughs> she looks good. Uh, some other top looks uh, are, are my favorite pharmacist uh, visitor. Uh, this is... Uh, What's his name? Lucas Gage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> his name. And Heidi Montag's tethered underground person. Um, so this is them at the actual Camp Poosh that was uh, sponsored by Kourtney Kardashian. So everybody had to, like, pick out their outfits. Because if you're not wearing the appropriate festival attire, uh -huh. are you even doing Coachella? I don't even know. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem like it. You would be. We have the Little Mermaid herself, Halle Bailey. Okay. Haley Bailey. Haley. Haley. Halle Bailey. Halle Bailey. I have the hardest time between. It's a Halle hard Berry, one. It's that was a choice. To Halle Berry. Keep it. And Haley Bailey. I know. Halle Bailey. I know. Tomato, tomato. Gwen and Olivia Rodrigo. Oh, and she went old school with her mm -hmm. look, Gwen. It was actually really cute. They sang "Bathwater," which is my favorite No Doubt song. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And then Paris and Kyle giving you Denver aunt and niece, <laughs> you know, just chemosabi realness, just out and about. Uh -huh. Would you go to Coachella with your aunt? If my aunt was a uh, real housewife of Beverly <laughs> yeah. Hills? Would you be Maybe. like, yeah, 
Maybe. I think it's so, it's so much. And then obviously Megan Fox. Oh, she's got blue hair now. She, well, it was, it's a wig. I think she had, okay. it's, she had her hair blue, like a bob, and then she just added extensions to it. But yeah, it's everything is just cowboy chic. Oh, we're in the desert. Let's put on a cowboy hat. Now, how does everybody know that it's going? Is that is that how it is every year, or is just this year cowboy? No, it's not a gay cruise. It's not like <laughs> theme nights. Okay, everyone just kind of does this like Western wear. But I feel like they all have stylists that are like, oh yeah, for sure, talking. Oh yeah, there was so many influencers that I saw that were uh-huh. like, help me get ready for Coachella. And then here's day one. Okay. Day two. Let me know in the comments if you like it. I'm like, ugh, gross. Ugh. All right. Um, and then we had this. We had Jay Balvin, mm-hmm. who is a singer. Uh-huh. He collabed. A lot of these people collabed with people. Lana Del Rey had Billy Eilish, you know, uh, Olivia Rodrigo with Gwen Stefani, no I doubt. You're say Billy Eichner. Billy Eichner. <laughs> and Lana Del Rey. And Lana Del Rey. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we had Jay Balvin and Will Smith. Will Smith came out and oh, I mean wow. came out on stage. Oh. And, sorry, I know. And wow. um was dressed in his men in black suit and they sang Men in Black. Well, that's fun. It was odd. Um the kids said it slapped cuz he slapped Chris Rock. We'll workshop that. No, no, I get it. Um but Jada attended as well. Uh she I don't know why. I think they were obviously there because they're kids because Jaden was with Justin Bieber, like you said. Um, And they all are friends. They all grew up together. But apparently Willow Smith was there and she's debuting her new album. Sure. You know, because Nepo Babies. Now, I hear you're a Nepo Baby. I am. Would you like to uh, go into that? How how are you a Nepo Baby? Um, Well, my father's Steven Spielberg. Oh, okay. This whole time. Yeah. Right on. No, he's not. My he dad's a clown. Okay. Which would make me a Nepo baby, yes. A professional but clown? He's a, yes. And what is the clown's name? I don't do that. I draw the line. You don't want It's th- Googleable. Is Listen. that the name, Googleable? <laughs> Googleable clowns, clear. Uh, how do you feel about clowns? I mean, I am one. But how do you feel about the ones with the noses and the... Hmm. Choose your words. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. This is my heritage. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> offend you. I feel like if I see a clown, I can look at them and go, I see you. Well, it's hard to not see that. I know, but thing. I mean like inside. I know. Mm. I know what's going on. You know, got to go to kids parties and run around in a, a big top tent and make balloon animals. Yeah. And put out a fire in a on a human ladder. It's a lot. It's they, a lot of work. Do you know how many times my dad would offer me some nuts? And I was like, ooh, a snack. And a giant snake shot out in my face. Mm. Trauma. I'm terrified of snakes now yeah. because of that. But how many times did you finally go, that's not a peanut brittle can, Dad? No, every single time I fell for so it. So it's I your thought, fault. But I thought as a, my father, he would have, mm-hmm. you know, given me a snack. He asked me to smell his rose. He would have a rose on his lapel. Mm-hmm. He would ask me many times, smell this rose. I and said, I, oh, I that see looks where this beautiful. Is going. Yeah. And what happened? It shot right in my eye. Water? I don't know what it was. Depends on the mood of your dad that day. It just shot right in my eye. I get it. Many times. Mm-hmm. So I have I had some trust issues. We've gotten, you know, we've worked through some things, mm-hmm. but I'm very proud of him. Good. Good. I love that you guys are able to get close closer than before now, you know. Oh my god, we the way we used to pack into a little car we've been very close family trips were really uncomfortable oh my god all 12 of us yeah, in one little tiny a car huge family yeah yeah i get that but he knew how to do it mm-hmm. genetically i'm glad of my hair because he's bald on the top oh uh, and then he has hair just around the sides yeah but do you guys have do you guys wear the same shoes or no he's got very big feet that's what i hear so do i but 
runs in the family. It, that part I did get from him. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Now tell us about the show, Living for the for Dead. For the Dead. Living for the Dead, which is the Living. best title ever. I came up with that. Thank you, you did? Yes, I did. It's great. How did this show come about? Um, Kristen Stewart. I've heard of her. Was she at Coachella? I don't know if she was. Okay. Let me text her. I got text her. She's my bitch. friend now. Hey, Kristen, what you doing? Were you a Coachella girl? Um, Kristen Stewart had this great idea with her friend CJ to, um, you know, like ghost hunting shows, mm -hmm. but with queer people. Mm -hmm. So they teamed up with the people that produced Queer Eye, Scout mm -hmm. Productions. They're like, oh, those people know how to get five queer people together. Mm -hmm. So basically they did the <laughs> same thing. They found five of us and we're all LGBT. I just spilled all over my... This is this is the spirit. That was your dad. That was your dad. The spirit of my dad's clown. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, Bubbles. Is it Bubbles? No. What is it? Who told you that? No, it's not. It's not. Um, it's Googleable. Uh, yeah, there's five of us. We're all LGBTQ. So the cast of Scooby Doo. Yeah. Yes. And like it's like psychics, witches, tarot readers. You know, tech. You know the the, the machines and yeah. stuff. And what was? And the, then there's me. <laughs> and then there's you. I would say you were like the Daphne of the bunch. Yeah, I'm just there acting a fool, looking cute. Um, I do the research and, on the places. Mm -hmm. um, now, I try to connect the dots, so the psychics would be like, "I got a feeling there's somebody here named." And you were like, "Hold Steve. up, I got this." X, Y, Z, yeah. this is why you're feeling this. Yeah. So you're having to calm down the like <laughs> the actual experts. You're like, this is why you're feeling this girl. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't believe in experts on that kind of stuff because mm -hmm. it's the unknown. Yeah. So, you know, if somebody says there's someone in this building named Brett, it's like, okay, well, that's it's not a fact. Yeah. Let's find facts. But you had like the EVPs and the all that kind of stuff, right? Yes. And because I always watch these like ghost hunter shows and they like step on a branch and they're like, ah, and it's like, yeah. Ugh, okay. Yeah. But you guys actually documented actual encounters. Mm -hmm. Like, what were some that stood out to you? Well, there's a lot that we didn't document, which oh, is really? like crazy because we spent, that's the thing, you spend multiple days in these locations yeah. and then the show's like, you know, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, whatever. So you don't see a lot of, of what happens, mm -hmm. but um, there was, and, and also when you do those shows, it's like, you can't really capture someone brushing by you, like a ghost you know, pulling your hair. Like, you can't... It doesn't uh, capture on film. Well, the subtitles can. I love a good squelching. Oh, I love squeal. a good whooshing. Yeah. Audible. Um, what's the what's the word like? Um, uh, inaudible voices. That kind of stuff in the subtitles. The subtitles let totally. you know. Yeah, we had a lot of those. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we had a lot of uh, voices coming through. Famously, one called me the F word. I know, which if all over TikTok, I actually saw that on TikTok. It was the um, gay F word. The the a bundle of sticks or a packet of cigarettes in slang. Is that what they call a bundle of sticks? Yeah. I had no clue. The more you know. The oh. origins. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why we're called a bundle of sticks. Because we're skinny. <laughs> um... <laughs> But no, what was that? What was that? Because let's let's okay. summarize what that clip was. So you guys are in this haunted strip club. Strip club was uh -huh. it really a strip club in Vegas? Work, yeah. Like shut down or still running? Um, still running. Uh, was it in the? It's not on the strip though, is it? No, it's on Fremont. The Palomino. Fremont. More over in that area. Yeah. Yes. So you're in there during the day or night. Um, that one we did during the day because they were, they work at night. Fair. Um, and you guys are like summoning, conjuring, asking sure. for spirits to join you. And you ask the question, you, do you not like me or something? Cause you weren't getting responses. All of the places that we go to, it's to help. There's, there's a, there's a mission that we're on. And <laughs> what was the mission of the Palomino? <laughs> the, the dancers, the strippers oh. were getting 
harassed. harassed and attacked and the the ghosts are being rude to these women no. that are out there Mm-mm. trying to make a living yes hashtag me boo no yes and i was trying to tell these ghosts do you know how many amazing places or how many horrible places you could be a ghost at yeah and you get to be here yeah you get to look at titties for free full, forever full nude by the way oh work and, um, yeah, they're there for eternity. And I'm like, come on, this could be so much worse. I know, but would you, if you were a haunting place and you, like, were into titties and stuff, would you want to leave? It's free. They don't kick you out. They can't. Well, I I would kick the ghost out. I'm not afraid of that ghost. <laughs> I, I was literally threatening to bounce the ghost with, and I don't even do that kind of stuff. Like, I'm not the kind of person that goes in and clears out ghosts. <laughs> I don't do that, but they don't know that. Yeah, yeah. So I came in there. I had my Palo Santo. Oh, look at this ghost Karen over here. Just like, I'm yes. going to tell you all to leave. But you know what? I was a Karen for the dancers. Good for you, yes. And I was like, you don't mess with these women. And what? And so the ghost then says, or you ask the ghost, you don't like me very much because you're picking up that like they're kind of being aggressive that you're there. Yeah, and then I asked it, <laughs> um, is it because you don't like my hair? Uh-huh. And then a machine lit up and it confirmed that it did not like my hair. Oh. Uh, what? And one thing that got cut from that, when I was done with that scene, one of my nails here that are fused to my fingers came off. And I was like, that was so strange. I don't know. A lot of things felt like this ghost was messing with Like me. it ripped your nail off? Um, I didn't like get hurt, but like it, it, it broke. Oh, it doesn't happen to me very often, like ever. And it was just really strict because I usually if that happens is because I jam it in something or whatever. I was just like chilling and all of a sudden my nail was like half broken. Ooh, that's weird. And it was very sharp. And like, what, you're trying to give me a scratch my eye with this? Thing? Like, I don't it know. It was. But either way. Um, and then, uh, another time when we were there, I was trying to get some answers. The others were talking to a machine and I was like, you know what? We don't need this. Talk to this (laughs) motherfucker. And and that's when it said And then I sit down to talk to it. And then it said bundle of sticks. That's so weird. Yeah. And I love that you almost said it and cut yourself off. You were like, it called me a (gasps) the bad one. Well you know why? It's because I was afraid that that word would get Cut. Censored? Yes. No, that was that is a that's star quality. That's right there. professional. Yes. So yes. I said it called me up. Mm-hmm. It said the gay the be- <laughs> F word. It said the F word. And then I realized, well, that could mean fuck. Uh-huh. And I, no, the gay the one. The gay one. So I wanted people to know what I was talking about. I mean, but like hate crimes by a ghost. I mean. Yeah. Wear it with pride, girl. I love it. And- I mean, if people are constantly coming up to me saying that word now because they I'm like getting associated with it and TikTok Instagram has got millions of views and yeah they keep coming up to me I know you I know you you're that you're that girl that got called the F word by a ghost tis I tis I well maybe you need to not go to the Palomino uh casino or hotel and maybe go to ghost haunts somewhere where there's notable queer hauntings. Here are some that uh, if you if you were in the mood to <laughs> get haunted by, this is the the cast of the handsome podcast. <laughs> this is Tignatero. Oh my god. And Fortune Feimster. <laughs> um, just having a nice Victorian Sunday. Um, this is, <laughs> we have some actual places. Let's see. Here's the most fascinating. Oh, this guy has been on my podcast. Oh, really? These are the, these are the ladies of the Langolin at Plan Nude. I don't even know how to say Those that. Those are the ladies? Those are the ladies, yes. Oh. Um, uh, in the decades before Anne Lister, a.k.a. Gentleman Jack, became an en- English sensation as a strong-minded lesbian who donned men's fashion, Ireland was shaken by the elopement of Sarah Ponsonby and Eleanor Butler, who ran off to Wales in 1778 to build a life together. Wow. Their small cottage would become a grand manor named Pla Nude. Unlike Lister, these two women were well-respected by the townsfolk, welcomed in the church, and routinely had opportunities to host the rich and famous in their stately home. They were buried together in the cemetery, and their home has since become a museum. So, there's that. 
That's um, wonderful. If that's a little too far for you, you can always go to the Hollywood Roosevelt. Oh, and, many times. Ooh, and see Montgomery Clift. Yes. Um, apparently, that place is incredibly haunted. He stayed there for several months in 1952 during the filming of From Here to Eternity. Ghost hunters and researchers alike still check into the room on occasion to see if they can hear the echoes of his horn. I'd hear, the, I'd hear the echoes of his horn. Uh, Montgomery Cleft was hot. He was pretty hot. But you know the story about him, right? Didn't he get into a car accident? And, mm-hmm. and he never yeah. looked the same. Uh-huh. But I mean, he did. Yeah. He looked the same, but he had like a little bit of plastic surgery. Yeah. Have you seen Suddenly Last Summer? Mm-hmm. See, this is, you talked to me about Haley Bieber. I don't know. Yeah, but the, you, yeah, you, olden days. You talked to me about Suddenly Last Turner Summer. Classic Movies. <laughs> yeah. You talked to me about Suddenly Last Weekend. No. <laughs> suddenly Last Summer, we're in. We're in. I know. Yeah. I know. I do. It, it, I mean, and closeted and like mm-hmm. playing his horn in the Roosevelt. Uh, that's it for me. I mean, I love it. Anything, but he's practicing, so it's probably like. <laughs> but let's be real; it wasn't a trumpet; it was the skin flute. <laughs> yeah. And then you have this little creep right here, Alistair Crowley at the Boliskine House. Yeah. I don't even know what this is, but it's really? haunted. Yeah, the you don't wi- know about Alistair Crowley. Do you know about him? Of course. The wickedest man in the world once called Scotland home, living in a house overlooking Loch Ness. Alistair Crowley made a name for himself as an outspoken, outrageous ocu- uh, occultist, though few today remember his filthiest book of verse ever written, The Homoerotic White Stains. <laughs> Which, by the way, they performed at Coachella over the weekend. Okay. The White Stains. The white or the stains. infamous gay sex magic rituals he conducted in a Paris hotel in 1914. His home, Boliskine House, has long been the center of lore and supernatural phenomenon surrounding the house and the spirit of Crowley himself, or if you believe the 2007 article published in The Scotsman by male- uh, malevolent entities conjured by, quote, the, the beast. beast. <laughs> Himself, that was a little Alyssa Edwards for you all. Vandals burned the house down in 2015, but restoration efforts are currently underway to preserve the historic and reputably haunted manor. So, you know, some haunted venues for you. White stains. The white stains. Yeah. See, but I'm going to be real here. Mm-hmm. Coachella's not my thing because I go to the real festival. And that's the Renaissance Fair. And I'm going this weekend. Are you really? I'm going this weekend. Never been to that either. Really fun. More down to earth folk. I, I'm sure. Yeah. Down to Middle Earth. Do, do, <laughs> do people do drugs? I'm sure. Yeah. They're called ye old drugs. Yeah. But I feel like it's just more, it's not like, it's not like a shit show. I like it because it's just, it's a fun time to just kind of like nerd out a little bit. But some people Uh take it really, really seriously. Of course. It is like their season. Uh You're going to get hot jousters. You're going to get like, you know, the weekend we're going is called Cottage Core Weekend, which I have to tell everyone at home. Y'all know that my car got broken into and my dog bed was stolen. <gasps> but guess what else was stolen? Your cottage my core. My cottage core dress that I wore with Sarah Highland on. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Was stolen. What an interesting thief. Isn't it weird? So if you see a grown person wearing my XL cottage core dress, XXL, let's be real. I'm not a petite anymore. But. Be on the lookout and call your local authorities. Oh, my God. Isn't that crazy? I know. Wait, so is the Renaissance Fair, like, all year round? No, it goes until, like, I want to say the end of May. It started either last week or the week before. Have you seen Mermaids? The doc- Yes. No, no, no. There's a documentary. Yes. Called Mermaids. I know. On Netflix. Uh-huh. It's produced by the same people that did my show. Really? Yeah. It's a great show. I love it. But there's mermaids that work at the Renaissance. At the Ren Fair. I'm going to be on the lookout for that. I want to see if Sparkles is doing the circuit. Oh, my God. Remember Sparkles? She was the one we were rooting for. That show, if anyone hasn't seen, it's about people that dress like mermaids, Mm -hmm. like for a living, Mm -hmm. for a hobby. There's like a whole gang of them. Like there's a circuit. 
Like they go to festivals. Yeah. Like I love that. I think it's so weird and fascinating. But like at the Ren Fair, you're going to get people who like train falcons and there's like a falcon show and they like fly these falcons. I'm like, what? It's cool shit. Like it's nerdy, but it's fun. You drink mead all day. And then when the sun starts to set, you get Ren Fair horny people. What does that look like? A lot. Like Ren Fair horny. Ye old sex club with an E. Stop. Yeah. Like Do burly, people, like milky tits just pushed up to here. The lace starts to come undone. Everyone starts talking in their like weird Middle Earth language. Do they break Back character hair. at mm. all? Huh? Do they break character? The real ones don't. <laughs> okay. The real ones don't. And there are some hot ones. There are some, like, good-looking, like, Ren Fair people. There's, uh -huh. like, and, and some of the guys walk around, like, Gaston. And, yeah, you're kind of like, <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. It's it's intriguing. If you ever want a good time. It's never occurred to me. Go to the Renaissance Pleasure Fair. Oh. That's why it's called. I don't even know why it's called that, but I've seen some things. I've been to the Pleasure Chest. Yeah, I've been to the Pleasure Chest. They have a comedy show there. <laughs> Yeah, they did. No, they do. It's back. Oh, they, I was never on it. They never asked me to perform it. I put in a word for you. Thank you. Um, but keeping on the theme of ghosts, we have we have a special RIP announcement. Uh-oh. Lori and George Chappelle, the world's oldest conjoined twins, have died at 62. And we just talked about them the same episode that I was wearing my cottage core outfit, and now it's stolen, and now these twins are dead. The eclipse has affected us all. Wow. So I'm really sad. We were, Sarah Hyland and I were discussing about them, and yeah, and they passed away. They had a song on YouTube. Is this the one that was a country singer? Yeah. Her uh, name was Reba, or she had like a, a song, a song by Reba McIntyre, and they wheeled her around on a little tripod. And yes. George was transgender. It was the first transgender. Let me see. Yes. I remember seeing them on TV shows, like in the 90s and stuff. I'm going to call this out, though. If you're going to put the article of the dead conjoined twins, put George as George. That was not George in that picture. Yeah. This is their hit oh, song. Oh, that was pre-transition. Uh-huh. This is the fear of being alone. God, I'm so glad we're visiting this one again. See, this is George. You know, I feel like we just visited this story and now they're gone. Work. Here's a question. Uh-huh. One tombstone or two? <laughs> I don't... I, you know, I'm not... Or is it one tombstone and a little tombstone coming out of the side? <laughs> Justin, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, how cute would that be? <laughs> oh, no. Well, RIP. <laughs> we missed them already. Um, guess what? What? Now what? <laughs> John oh Wayne God. Bobbitt is back in the news. Okay. Do you remember John Wayne Bobbitt? Yes. His wife cut his dick off in the 90s. Lorena Bobbitt. Mm. Um... Now, he can't keep another limb. He's losing his limbs, Roz. His toes were amputated due to contaminated water. He's been left unable to work as a result of multiple operations. I know. Oh, no. I know. We'll read a little bit more of this story. He, John Wayne Bobbitt has had his toes amputated over 30 years since he made headlines when his wife, Lorena Bobbitt, sliced off his penis. And he um, was like a bad guy, right? He was, Yeah, he like hit her and stuff. Uh -huh. Like. But tried to play it off like, oh, I, I just woke up and my dick was off. And it's like. Okay. Because I Lorraine, remember there was a documentary. I didn't watch. Yeah. Or maybe like, I did. Yeah. I think I got to like three and then I was like, okay. Uh -huh. I, what? We get it. Um, so he has been diagnosed with toxic peripheral 
Whew. Polyneuropathy, he r- revealed in a new interview with The Sun. Okay, well, the, I'm glad The Sun is picking up this story. Due to his time at the infamous military base, Camp Lejeune in North Carolina in the 80s, when the base's water was severely contaminated. The condition involves damage to the peripheral nervous system, which sends signals between the central nervous system and other body parts. According to John, who now lives in Florida, Sure. It has caused him both nerve damage and osteomyelitis, a bone infection that leads to ulcers and requires skin grafts. As a result, he has had multiple operations. During the last surgery in 2023, he had his remaining toes amputated, which he said left him unable to work. Poor guy. He's had skin grafts. He's had four skin grafts. Like, he is just losing his limbs. And he did porn. That's right. He did porn after his penis was put back on. Wow. So, never give up, kids. <laughs> I feel bad for him. But also, I don't. But that's... I mean, it's kind of karma, you know? Yeah. Because she chopped the dick up not thinking that it was going to get reattached. And it got reattached. Oh, she chopped it off, got in the car drove just like thrown in a field rolled or the window down threw it out the window and then but she you know what i'm saying like karma has caught up where it's like okay well the penis didn't go but the toes are gonna go yeah but also what are wh- i need to know like are any of the other guys that were in his division affected by this are they losing their toes interesting you know what i mean i'm glad that you are covering some of the serious news mm-hmm Thank you. I mean, I'm just trying to give journalism like back to where it was before COVID. You want to talk about OJ Simpson? Is that what you want to talk about? No, I no, I really do appreciate this. <laughs> so, for nearly 60 years, right down to the day, <laughs> New York City leaders have understood that they could not kill their way out of their never-ending rat problem. Rats are prodigious breeders with one pair having the potential to produce 15,000 descendants in a year. Slay. That's a lot. That Did you is say slay? Lot. Yeah. Slay. <laughs> That's impressive. I mean, 15,000 kids in a year. From one rat. One pair of rats. From one pair. 15,000. 15, How long does it take for them to I don't like, carry know. a child? I can't. I, I can't know. It'll probably keep me up at night. It's blah, 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 blah. Can't do it. Wow. So city officials have tried repeatedly to give them contraceptives and diminish their ranks But the rats have prevailed. Now, citing advancements in rodent birth control and trash storage, the city council wants to try again. A new bill being introduced this week would require the city's health department to deploy salty pellets that sterilize both male and female rats in two neighborhoods as part of a pilot program. The pellets would be used within so-called rat mitigation zones covering at least 10 city blocks. So... Mm. We are trying to Salty pellets. give rats birth control. Have they tried the pull-out method? I don't think they have. I don't know much about this kind of stuff, but I've heard that that is a thing people do. I'm glad we're giving, finally, as a society, a rat's right to choose mm-hmm. um, whether they want to keep their 15,000 babies or not. It's up to them. Mm-hmm. Um I'm going to be a little controversial. Uh Uh-oh. I am pro rat life. There, I said it. What do you mean? I feel like every rat is precious. It was put here for a reason on this earth. And we need to have that rat in this world. Do you ever see them? Thank you. I know. A lot of people get mad at me and they're like, you don't get it. You know, you you stay in your lane, you man. And I'm like, you know what? I'm sorry. You human. You human being. You don't even know. Squeak, yeah. squeak. You know. What were you going to ask me? Do you see them in LA ever? Rats? Yeah. Um, Because I like... Do me. twinks count? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I never see them in LA. I don't think LA. they're here. So... <gasps> Wait! <laughs> I just had a full-on, like... That's so Raven. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that was, I felt that. I was like, yeah. Um, I did not see a rat, but you know what I saw? What? A possum. So cute, though. Possums are adorable. 
No, you're you're goth. That's that's, that's right. yeah. You're, you know, it scared the shit out of me. Yeah, I get that. Oh, there's my. something about those tails on both rats and possums that I can't do. Just a thick, like hairless Bald. tube. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't look at my Pornhub history. <laughs> um, <laughs> possum sex. Um. The uh, I was walking my dog. And she, you know, she freaks out whenever she sees a squirrel or a bird. She's like, she does this thing. So she just like got really stiff. And I was like, oh, God, what? And it was dark. And I had my flashlight. It was very Ghost Hunters. It was very much that because I was like, who's there? You know, I I didn't say who's there, but I felt it. And I flashed the light and it was just two like glowing eyes in the corner. And it was just this. And I'm like, what the fuck is that and it was this gigantic gigantic possum and its mouth was open and it was just like (sighs) hissing at frida and i named her gypsy rose blanchard and i said get and she scurried (laughs) off back into into the shadows lad you probably know this story but it was one time my friend dipper and i we went to we went miniature golfing Uh and when we got back to our car it was late at night and we saw a little tiny kitten like oh. under a car and we were like oh my god and is this one of those like scary stories to tell in the dark where you're like that's not a kitten well it's a so mexican sewer rat we were like trying to figure out so we put the lights on my car like headlights on so that we could see it and we're like oh my god so cute then we drove a little bit closer it was a beer can oh. and we were sober <laughs> You're like, mira, look. Mira, it, it's mira la gato. <laughs> it was just a Tecate can. You're like, wait. Uh, it literally was. Are you into skinwalkers? Okay, that's a personal question. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know my dating profile? I'm obsessed with skinwalkers right yeah. now. Yeah. Skinwalkers, TikTok. Can yeah, get they're it. having a moment. They really are. Sure. Do you believe in it? Sure, I believe in anything's possible. No. If you don't know what skinwalkers are, it's like an ancient ghost shapeshifter. shapeshifter. Yeah, but they can't like get into the form properly. And like a lot of people say that they like try to get in the shape of like your dog or like sometimes even people, but like something's always a little off. Like, uh-huh. especially with dogs, they have like human looking features. Yeah. And Skinwalker TikTok is my like kink (laughs) yeah it's totally like i mean come through whatever that is what is it what is that what is it it's just me crab walking from the comedy store just drunk (laughs) just like they just got me on camera i'm like look what i can do down sweets or um skinwalker was it's spotted in west hollywood Yeah, skinwalker martindale i mean it's creepy that's a rake though that's those are terrifying too but, um, yeah, they have glowing eyes. There's people on video with, like, their dog, and this dog's trying to get in the door. And they're like, that's not my dog. This is my dog. And you're like, ah! I got chills. Oh, uh, that's spooky. Yeah, it is spooky. And you know me. I love spooky horror stuff. Yeah, it's a Navajo culture skinwalker. Yeah. It's a type of harmful witch who has the ability to turn into, possess, or disguise themselves as an animal. So, yeah. Speaking of skinwalkers, Nick Vial thinks there's so much more to the story with the Golden Bachelor, Jerry Turner, and Teresa Nist, who are also skinwalkers, divorced. Did you hear about this? The, no, the, I don't the know Golden any bachelor? of those words. Oh, <laughs> so the Golden but Bachelor. I know there's an older man bachelor. Yes, yes. And I know he that. found love. Okay. And they got married on television. But before they got married, there was like... A little, uh, there was like a story that leaked that they were like having problems and arguing a lot, but they went through it because TV. They got married on television. Um, Do they make more money if they get married? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, And then they split. They broke up. They split uh, last week. And Nick Vial, who uh, was The Bachelor, and now he's a podcaster. Is he the gay one? Huh? Not the gay. Who's the gay one? Colton Underwood. Okay. Yeah. No. Nick Vial. I've actually, I met Nick Vial here. He was here once and I said hello. And I think I embarrassed myself. Probably. Yeah. I think I was like, I'll give you a rose. And he was like, okay, bye. 
Skinwalker. <laughs> Skinwalker. <laughs> Who told you? <laughs> um, but yes, they got, uh, they're, they're getting divorced. He says that I think what shocked me the most is that this wasn't just a normal breakup or an end of an engagement. This was a divorce announcement. Uh, Nick said, he said he was caught off guard and surprised by the abruptness. So yeah, they only were married for three months. So it doesn't require lawyers to get out of an engagement. It does require lawyers to get out of a marriage. And I'm really curious what changed with Jerry and Teresa that made them so sure to sign up a marriage license, but now only to get a divorce. So they met and fell in love on The Golden Bachelor. They got married in a televised special in January and announced their divorce three months later. So I don't know. It doesn't surprise me because I feel like this happens on these shows. Mm. What are you going to get? What are you going to fall in love like in two weeks and get married and be happy? Like, sorry. And he looks trapped. <laughs> Doesn't he? He's just like, oh, well, I guess I'll just go along with this. And she's like, I'm really excited. I, I think she wanted um, maybe something out of this, like a, like a, a lifestyle brand no. or a development deal. No. no. Um, People don't do that. Sponsorships. For that. Um, but yeah. I'm going to call it. Did you watch it? No, I have things to do. Yeah. I have to Google skinwalkers on TikTok. <laughs> I could I'm see a myself very busy man. <laughs> I, I would like to see older people. I like watching older people. Doing what? Just in general? Everything. You just like watching old people? Yes. Like in public? I like to... It makes me feel so much better about aging mm-hmm. to see older people like dating or like just living life. Mm-hmm. So... 30 plus. Have you seen my friends? I have a lot of older friends. <laughs> yeah, I saw them on, I saw them at Coachella on Instagram. I was like, girl, <laughs> what are y'all doing? Y'all are in your 30s. What is going on? No, I'm friends with a lot of people that are twice my age. Yeah. Because I, I love it. I'm inspired. It doesn't make me scared of getting old. Well, I don't think being, getting old should be scary. I do, I don't like the idea of, here it is. It's the fairy tale television of this this older man who lost his wife mm. and now he's going to get a second chance of love. Yeah. On television. The place to do it. And then he's got to dwindle these old whores out until he finds the one love of his life. I don't even know how the Golden Bachelor works. Do they do the fantasy suites? You know what the fantasy suite is? When they, that's like, where they do it, right? But like with all of them? Wait, they Not like at the same time. Oh. Unless <laughs> it's a unless they're at a Renaissance fair now and they get rent for horny. <laughs> I want to see the poly bachelor, polyamorous. Oh, that's a good idea. Put them all in one room together and they have to agree <laughs> on their He doesn't all send one. anyone home. He's yeah. like, all right, guys. <laughs> but they all have to get together. They're all dating each other. Uh-huh. So they all have to like and if there's some that aren't liking each other, they gotta go. That's just sister wives. Oh, is that what that is? I think so. (laughs) Which is on the Learning Channel. Right. Which the only thing I've learned from the Learning Channel is never to watch the Learning Channel. That's also 90 Day Fiance Channel, right? I think so, yeah. 90 Day Fiance, my 600 pound aunt. Oh, 1,000 pound sisters. 1,000 pound sisters. uh, My dad's a tow truck. Um, (laughs) That, yeah. I eat my couch. Like those kind of shows. Yeah. Um, speaking of eating couch, Travis Kelsey chugged a beer while he and his brother Jason received their diplomas, um, which was something that I didn't need, but, uh, uh, it happened while hosting a live new Heights podcast event. The brothers received diplomas during a surprise commencement ceremony at the university of Cincinnati, uh, Travis, do you know who Travis Kelsey is? Yes. Okay. Travis is, uh, he earned a degree in interdisciplinary studies in 2022. And Jason got a bachelor's degree in marketing. First of all, they're 34 and 36. I did not know that. That seems like such a man. They seem like. But now that I'm like in my 30s, I'm like, wait, they're kids. (laughs) But I thought they were like, man. Like, I thought they were like. Older yeah. than 34 and 36. Well, they're professional athletes. And they're still playing Okay, don't athletes. mansplain me, Lee. <laughs> wow. 
I know. I did I you hear that? that? Yeah, that felt. Don't I get it? Yeah, they have CTE that ages them. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're professional athletes, so they're going to look fucking old and haggard. Okay. Let me see. No, I meant that's why they're young. That's why they're young. Yes. Right. Because we can't have we can't have a golden athlete, can we? We can't have just a, a an athlete, a 39 year old athlete just trying to hit the pigskin once again. Is there is there an age limit for football? No, but most people don't play into their 40s. Oh, so he's towards the end of his career. Well, he retired. Jason did. Travis is still going because he has to now. He's won, what, three Super Bowls? Oh, because he just won the Super Bowl. That's right. Okay. Yeah, and he's got to, like, take Taylor to sushi. So did they graduate high school or college ever? We don't know. It said they have degrees. So Travis, what is this? Travis earned a degree in interdisciplinary studies. This isn't a real graduation ceremony. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Travis Kelsey earned a Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies in 2022, but missed his graduation ceremony. The university surprised him during New Heights live recording. The event also fundraised for the Cincy Reigns NIL Collective. Okay. But while he was presented with his um, diploma, he chugged a beer on the stage Um which <laughs> it's a cool guy move. Here's the thing. We couldn't do shit. If any of like my fellow students at graduation, we were told like, we will take away your diploma. If you like do like anything like, <laughs> or like, <laughs> suck it, you know, like, yeah, they would, this guy, they're like, Oh, look at Travis. Oh, I think it's cheap. Boo. Oh, no, I don't like that. La- oh, oh, yeah. No. You fucking man. Look at you walking. Oh, what a turd. I swear I'm a lesbian. I think I am, too. goes on. I think I am, too. I didn't graduate college, so I don't know. But I probably would have pulled out a LaCroix. I, thank you. (laughs) Yeah, you're like, did someone say pomplamoose? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh Yeah. Yeah. Just when you didn't think it could get more, bro. Uh Deadpool and Wolverine is coming out this summer. With Ryan Reynolds any of that. and Hugh Jackman. Has there been any guests that know less than me on this show? I think so. What am I interested in? I don't know. That's I on you. I truly don't know <laughs> anything. <laughs> All I do is talk about ghosts. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything else. That's fine, though. That's a good... That's Ghosts are fun. <laughs> <laughs> What if, like, what if you came to a party? Like, how would I introduce you? I'm like, this is my friend Roz. A ghost. She's into ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Like, what if you went to a party and like it was all a bunch of strangers? Then like, hey Roz, so tell us about yourself. Well, I'm into ghosts. Literally. That's but like, what's it. your favorite ghost? Do you have a favorite ghost story? The time a ghost called me up. <laughs> mm-hmm. See, as a, a cisgender woman, I don't feel like I should say, say that it. word. No, I don't feel like I should as a cis woman and an ally to your community. Uh-huh. I don't feel like I should use that word. Mm-hmm. I hear you and I see you. But um, I want to wrap this up because we've got two more stories. Okay. Okay. The Dune popcorn bucket came out and it looked like a flesh jack. I don't know if you saw the Dune popcorn bucket, mm. but um, it was a marketing campaign for Dune 2 to come out. Uh-huh. And there was a meeting and people were like, we've got this. This is what people want. And this is the Dune 2 popcorn bucket, which. Oh. Mm-hmm. See, I got one of those at the Pleasure Chest mm-hmm. when I did the comedy show. They gave mm-hmm. it to me. I'm sure some people took it on their carry-ons for the Atlantis cruise. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's what it looks like. And of course, people have horrible minds and they were like, oh, this looks like a flesh jack. But that doesn't even sound like a fun way to eat popcorn. It doesn't at all. Like, it looks like it hurts. I wouldn't want to do that. No, it's dirty. So, yes. So, Wolverine and Deadpool are now jumping on board with this whole, like, dirty popcorn bucket. We're going from X-Men to the triple X-Men. This is this is just asking all of the moviegoers for extra butter. 
Um, <laughs> how do you, how are you supposed to eat? Are you supposed to put your hand in that hole, or do you eat it at the top? I think you can do both because they have lids, or you open the you open the valve on the mouth and like shake it out into what into your hand. These are yes, not you're supposed you're supposed to put it into your hand, but I think some weird Mm-mm. things will happen when you give people an inch. They're gonna take a couple more inches. They're gonna take a couple more. Yeah, when yeah. it's just I get it. I think it's funny, but again, it's giving me Travis Kelsey at a college graduation vibes. Mm. Just like. <laughs> Because isn't that the whole thing is you put a hole in the popcorn? Uh, yeah. 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 And this is um, straight men going to see this. Going to see, yeah. And then. Uh, Deadpool. Deadpool. So, Deadpool. yeah. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> the world's on fire. And our final story, Meghan Markle's brother has mercilessly, mercilessly mocked the Duchess in a grotesque new YouTube video that is, quote, the ultimate betrayal. Now, I don't know if you know my history with her. Tell me. Um, I've never met her personally, but before I got bangs, okay, all I heard, every comment on the internet, Meghan Markle. Really? Now I'm Leah Michelle. No. No, yeah. you need to believe in yourself more. Well, speaking of believe, I, I just did a poll because other people... I want more people to say young share. Uh-huh. Oh. But currently, because it's just because of my bangs. Uh-huh. I get Katy Perry. No. I get Miranda Sings. No. I know. You can't have Miranda Sings. I know. I get the bartender from Shrek. I get that. But that's more when I didn't have my bangs too. But when I don't have my bangs, Meghan Markle. You'll get comments on this. I Megan. thought that was Meghan Markle. Okay. Oh, Justin got Meghan Markle on the show? I really hope this isn't like Chelsea in Love is Blind when she compared herself to Megan Fox. <gasps> and everyone's like, that's not Megan Fox. Oh, that was bad. Yeah. I did see that. Yeah. No, I've got I've got the receipts. There's thousands <laughs> of people have said online. We'll pop them up. I can send you a yes, bunch. If she's you got need receipts, them. you guys. People tell me I look like Meghan Markle. So deal it's with not, it. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. There's way worse people I could be. <sighs> I feel, I mean, you could be Meghan Markle's brother. <laughs> now, that's what I'm afraid of. So this is actually really interesting and disturbing. Can we watch a little bit of it? <laughs> My name's Megan Swamp Donkey Crotch. <laughs> I was just showing off my new... My new bump that I bought used on eBay out of Montecito. I hate him so much. First of all, this is the guy who stole my cottage dress out of my car. <laughs> I think he's like, you stole your axe. <laughs> he did steal. And yeah, could you imagine? I mean, Okay, <laughs> Meghan Markle's estranged half-brother has been accused of betrayal after sharing a savage new YouTube video in which he dresses up as the Duchess and accuses her of faking her pregnancies. Ooh. Thomas Markle Jr. donned a wig and a tiara in the 87-minute video. 87 minutes of that shit? Mm-mm. <laughs> While stuffing a pillow up his shirt to imitate a pregnant woman. My name is Me Again Swamp Donkey Crotch, which... If that's not a contestant on next season's Drag Race, I don't know I who is. I have done gigs with her. Oh, uh, coming to the Maybe. stage, me again, Swam Donkey Crotch. Yeah, she's you, good. Do you got a first aid kit handy? From uh, the house of Donkey Crotch. From the house of Donkey Crotch. Um, Thomas declares during the bizarre impersonation, I was just showing off the new bump I bought used on eBay out of Montecito. Royal commentator Jenny Bond slammed the video uh, telling the Daily Mail to have your own flesh and blood lead the assault must feel like the ultimate betrayal for Megan. She further described the footage as grotesque. So, yeah. These people, because doesn't she have a sister that takes to the press sometimes? Because I feel like they're... Yes. I forget what the dynamics the Markles, are. yeah. But they're not... Yeah, they're half... They're half siblings, yes. Not very close with her. Like, I don't think they no. grew up with her, maybe. Her like, mother is uh, African-American. And her dad is, I think her dad's been previously married. So they're like half siblings. 
But yeah, I'm just like, leave this woman alone. My God, she's just trying to do her thing. Let's see. Do you see this more? I do. I see it. It's giving briefcase number five. Now, let me show you how I got the nickname Donkey Swap Crush. <laughs> Gather round, children. Mother has a story from the house of Donkey Crotch. I mean, do you have siblings? Yes. You do? Like, what would what would, what would you do? Like, I'm trying to think if my sister or my brothers just trolled me online. I'd oh, pick up the phone and be God. like, hey, can you knock it off? I'm, I'm not going to get into it, but this is actually pretty real for me. <laughs> Land, you might know what I'm talking about. Was your sibling the one that was like, you look like the bartender from Shrek. <laughs> Speaking of donkey crotch, donkey. Yes, exactly. That's, um, well, I usually Listen, get. you can't choose who you're related to. That's true. But we can choose our our families, As our chosen gay people, families. We, we get, get to, to choose, choose our families. families. Which, you know what? Thank God. Yeah. I couldn't even imagine. And Megan, you know what, girl? You don't need it. You don't need it. And because I guarantee it, that man's balls uh -huh. smell like a donkey crotch. Oh. So, I mean, look at that. What does his shirt say? Boats and Boats hose? and hose. <laughs> <laughs> She's Not weird. only did the Titanic sink, but so did Meghan Markle's family. He's got all the stepbrothers quotes. The what? It's all stepbrothers quotes. Is that what, what Boats and, and Hose is? Oh, it is. It's a it's a reference from Step Brothers, which is super cool. Lee, I swear to God, this mansplaining must end. <laughs> I'm I grateful for it because I didn't are know that. Screaming at their at their phones uh, right now. He's telling me uh, what okay. football is. He's telling me quotes from Step Brothers, the movie. I appreciate it. If you can have a straight man that's not yeah. in, We're the voice of the people. Yeah. I learn things from them. Yeah, no. And they I learn agree. things from me. Yeah. Well, thank you, Roz. I have to I have to let you go because I have to get ready for the Brent Fair. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> it takes me it weeks. Takes you that long. <laughs> what if I did? I'm going on Saturday. I have to go home and get ready. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but this please, is a thank you so much for being here. Tell everybody Thanks where they can. For did you have me. fun? Did you learn that? I learned stuff? stuff so much. What was your favorite? Um <laughs> I love um. Mm -hmm. I'm sad about the conjoined twins, but we all are. I am. Uh, I was happy to learn about their music. Yeah, yeah, or and Reba's you, music. Yeah, and download it on YouTube. Let their legacy live on. Their spirits are free. But... And speaking of spirits, yeah, um, my television show is called Living for the Dead. Yes, it's on Hulu and Disney Plus. It's funny. It's spooky. It's cute. Uh, you might cry while watching it. It's a gay ghost hunting show. What could be better? I'll tell you what. Your podcast called Ghosted. That is called Ghosted by uh, Roz Hernandez. Available You've on, been on it. Every, I was on it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's available everywhere you get podcasts. I have on Funny People, Famous People. Chris and Stewart's done it. Oh, yeah. um, I've had all kinds of people on to talk about their experiences and beliefs and ghosts. But it's funny. Good, as yeah. as it should be. And you've learned more today than just ghosts. So I have. Now I can, yeah, I have a couple more talking points in the future. <laughs> That's good. You know what? But follow me on Instagram. I'm My dream is And to TikTok. Be, and TikTok. It's Roz Hernandez. Mm -hmm. Instagram, yeah. Roz Hernandez. It's my dream since childhood to be famous on Instagram. <laughs> Just, just to be famous on Instagram. That's all I need. Yeah, follow us both. And like always, thank you so much for watching and listening. Thank you for liking all the clips. Please rate and review. And we'll see you next time on the Just Saying Podcast with Justin Marndo. Have a great week, guys. Bye. Do, do you Danity Kane. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs>